So in layer of brew time, I thought I'd redo uh, the video which I've done before, which is up there. It's still publicly available, but this is like a version 2.0 of that. Um, and that is what, D what is a DMZ, how to enable it. Um, if you want to skip straight to how to enable the DMZ um, through my router interface, click up there, skip straight to the end. Um, I don't recommend it. I think you should probably um, have hear what I've got to say first before you go clicking wildly up there. But you can do and you can skip right to the end. So, before we actually go into what is a DMZ and things like that, I thought I'd explain a few things first. Um, I'm not going to explain what NAT is, but we'll quickly run through a scenario um, based upon NAT. So, you're, you've got a console, you've got like an Xbox or a PlayStation or even a PC, and you're trying to pwn some noobs on COD or whatever your game of choice is, and you're getting closed NAT types or strict NAT types, um, and you, that means you can't like join parties, you can't create parties, you can't host things, you can't host games, you can't voice chat with people, and it causes all sorts of problems. So how would you get that to be open? Well, what should what should actually happen um, theoretically is there should be a thing called Universal Plug and Play on uh, your router, and what it kind of does is something like a console will call out to that router and say, hey, can I have that, uh, can I have port so-and-so open for gaming? And the router will come back and say, yeah, of course you can. And it'll open that port automatically and you can then go straight through. And that's what should happen. Um, if you haven't got UPnP enabled, make sure you've got that enabled first because that might solve a lot of your problems. So UPnP stands for Universal Plug and Play. This thing called Plug and Play is one of those dangerous words in IT it doesn't mean plug and play because it doesn't, as a general rule, it doesn't work as well as you'd like it to, which is why you, even if you've got plug and play enabled, it sometimes doesn't play the game and you still have to um, manually go through DMZs and port forwarding, which is what I'm going to go on to now. So the other solution is you've got is port forwarding, which basically um, means you've got to manually forward the ports that you need. Um, ports kind of act a bit like gates um, within the firewall because your router acts as a firewall. It kind of acts like a like the fence around a around a prison, for instance. And ports uh, are essentially like the gates or the entry points um, through that firewall. And the more ports you have open, obviously, the less secure it is. Um, but the trouble is with the U, uh, UPnP, it also means that viruses can get hold of that. And if you've got a virus on your PC. Uh, it can automatically open ports on the router using UPnP, which um, is kind of like very insecure, and it can cause problems. I don't recommend using Universal Plug and Play because it kind of defeats the point of having a firewall. But for home users, to be honest, it doesn't matter too much. Um, you're likely to get a virus once the blue moon. Just make sure you back up your work. Be fine. Um, so yeah, that's that. So the other bit then is port forwarding. Now port forwarding, um, you can do this manually. You should be able to do it through your interface. When I do the bit at the end, how to enable the DMZ, I'll have a look at the port forwarding section and show you sort of the bits and pieces. You can, you should be able to just Google the ports you need to forward. Um, I'll put a link in the description below of a Google link for uh, Call of Duty ports uh, and things like that, um, so that you kind of have some inkling as opposed to not going to Google and typing Call of Duty ports or um, World of Warcraft ports or whatever other ports you need open. Um, so you can do manual port forwarding, or if you're still having problems, you can do the thing called DMZ or demilitarized zone. Now DMZ um, in like a corporate sense is like an area on the network um, that is dedicated it's usually something like a web server which is out on the outside world but you don't want it calling back to the rest of your network because obviously that would be very bad if that if that web server was to be attacked from the outside world then it could infect the entire network. So a DMZ in a corporate sense is kind of like an a setup area usually like a, a, a big um, it's like a subnet of of servers usually that are in that DMZ. Um, now in a home sense, DMZs generally are only one IP address. So, um, and that DMZ will be set in the router as to that, I want that IP address there to be a DMZ. So, what um, that kind of, what that does is it kind of separates out from the firewall. So that one IP address isn't firewalled. There's no firewall whatsoever. So it can be insecure. Now if you're using a PlayStation or, a, or an Xbox, it's not too much of a big deal. I mean, it kind of is because they can still be hacked. But PCs, desktops, things like that, uh, laptops, I wouldn't recommend putting them in a DMZ unless you absolutely have to because that basically means there's no firewall. Um, again, you being a home user, it doesn't matter too much. Just make sure you've got your work backed up. And if you need to re-image your machine, that's, that's that. Um, 
So this DMZ creates, like like you say, like a, a bit on the network that isn't firewalled, it's kind of separate to everything else, and it means that because there's no firewall, you don't have to F about with port forwarding or new PNP, just everything's open, it can access everything, and you should be fine and dandy. So there's several key things you're going to need before we go on to actually forwarding, uh, before we actually go on to setting up a DMZ. First of all, you're going to try and find out what the IP address is of your router. Now that should be on the bottom of your router. Um, it should be, it usually is a 192 address. So 192.168, usually something like .1.1 .1 or 0 0.1 or something like that. And that address uh, is kind of like a web address. You type that into your browser and that will give you a local um, user interface for you to, for you to use um, with your router. Um, the other two things you'll need as part of the router package is the password and the username for local uh, for local login for that. That should again be on the underside of your router. Now if you've changed any of these, then that, you need to find those out. Um, if someone else has changed them, you need to find that out. Um, if you change them, then you should know what they are. If not, just reset it from the beginning and start again. Um, so once you've got that, then you need to find out the, the IP address of the thing you're trying to put into the DMZ. Now that should be um, reasonably easy to do through your network settings on your PlayStation, your Xbox, or something like that. Now if I had one here with me, I don't, it's actually currently in my parents' place. If I had one here with me, I'd um, I'd probably record it and show you how you go into the interface and go into network settings and, and then find out what the IP address is. Once you find, but that should be reasonably easy to find. It should be in the network settings, piece of cake. Um, should tell you the IP address with, with relative ease. Um, once you've got that, then you're pretty much good to go. So what we'll do now is we'll head straight on over to a PC and we'll look at, uh, we'll go straight into the user interface and show you how to do DMZs. All right, so in the top we need to type in uh, the IP address of the router, which is that, should be on the underside of the router. Now my browser's already automatically recognized my password, so I don't need to worry about that. Just press continue. And then we're gonna go into it some advanced. Settings uh, now, port uh, port forwarding is ha. Huh. Um, port forwarding basically all you do is you select what you want to do. Um, here we've got like an actual service that we can choose, which is quite handy. Um, or we can actually just like just sort of enter it in here. Um, TCP and UDP you will have to try and find out, um, and you have to find that, and then the IP address of the device that you want that port to be forwarded to. But what we're going to do is we're going to go in DMZ host, and then all we need to do is basically define in there our uh, IP address. Um, it's set to 120 at the moment um, because that's currently running an Untangle server. But that, that literally is the only thing you need to do. Um, so it probably will be in some advanced settings. You might have to trawl around a bit. Uh, but yeah, you're looking for something that says DMZ host. It might be under some advanced thing. It might be under, it could be under literally anything. So I looked through all of them. Um, if you can't find it, it's obvious on the list. Um, this is quite good because this is a Netgear router and Netgears tend to be quite easy to navigate. So that was basically how to set up a DMZ. We looked at port forwarding, DMZs, a um, bit of NAT typing as well, a bit of firewalls as well. Obviously, if, if this has helped you in any way, share it with the world, like, subscribe, comment as well. You know, you don't, you don't necessarily have to watch the rest of my videos, but at the same time, I kind of like a bit of love back. But that's kind of that. If you've got any problems, questions, queries, of course, either ping me a, a PM, a private message. Um, I'll put my email address down below as well if you've got some issues uh, with tissues. Um, apart from that, I should catch you